Since the last few weeks, you must have heard of E20 fuel, E20 petrol, or ethanol blending in petrol in news a lot. E20, 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 E20 has ignited a fierce debate. To ethanol uh, that is actually impacting the, the quality of uh, car engines, mileage. 20% ethanol dalne ke upar desh mein ek to bhi gadi mein takra rahi ki aap naam batai. Aap 120 rupee jo petrol le rahe, uska abhav ham 15 rupee liter karenge. Now this is regarding ethanol being blended into petrol, thereby reducing the quantity of petrol being used in our vehicles. Which means E20 petrol, it consists of 20% ethanol and 80% petrol which is being sold by Indian oil refiners and has been much in news lately. See, India's transition towards a sustainable future, renewable energy and energy self-reliance and carbon reduction has been achieved with a remarkable feat of E20 fuel being launched five years before its official date which means the target which was initially set for 2030 has been achieved by the year 2025 where we have been successfully able to make e20 fuel that is ethanol 20 percent being blended with 80 percent petrol now this particular move will bolster the energy security of our country will support the sugarcane farmers will try to double the farmers income in our country increase the income of the farmers in our country will provide them livelihood and will also reduce the import bill of our country and reduce the crude oil imports, thereby reducing import dependence and helping in us achieving Atman Nirbhar Bharat. Now, while all these things are being done, there are several concerns which have been raised by public in general who have started using E20 fuel. Many people are suggesting a reduction in mileage, inefficiency in their vehicles, and also vehicle damage due to the corrosive nature of ethanol and lower energy content. Now, because of this, this E20 has become a bit debatable. Now, what is the issue all about? We'll be trying to discuss in this particular session. Hello, my name is Pipal Singh and you're watching Perspective. Now, let's first talk about ethanol. What do you mean by the term ethanol? Now, ethanol is an alcohol-based biofuel, which is typically derived by sugarcane, maize, or other biomass sources. So, ethanol is nothing but a biofuel. That is from biomass sources like sugarcane, like maize, like corn, like any other biomass, biomass uh, source. Alcohol-based biofuel, which is derived, is known as ethanol. Now, over the years, we have found that ethanol has some similar properties in relation to petrol, which is why certain ethanol blended with petrol can also work in the combustion engines of our vehicles, which is why then we started talking about ethanol being blended in petrol in order to reduce the requirement of petrol, which is why we started with E10. And E10 means 10% ethanol and 90% petrol. Now this we were able to achieve by the year 2022. And eventually, by the year 2025, we were able to achieve making of E20 fuel, where 20% ethanol could be blended with 80% petrol with certain chemical compositions. And eventually, this was applicable. And many of the vehicles which are E20 certified, so 2023 onwards, E20 certificate was issued with most of the vehicles in the country. So any vehicle which is made after 2023 would have this E20 certification in the country. Now, which is why, because of that, this E20 petrol could be used in the vehicles which are running in the country today which are manufactured after 2023 and as already discussed this achievement aligns with india's broader renewable energy targets india's zero net emissions by the year 2070 and also energy security ambitions of india under the national bioenergy program and you will be shocked to know that this ethanol blending is nothing new we have started this ethanol blended petrol program ebp program way back in the year 2003 in the last one decade or in the last seven to eight years it has gone it has been given a bit of impetus and more focus was given on this which is why we were able to achieve the target so early so firstly in point five format without further ado let us understand the importance of e20 first importance is very clear that it reduces the crude oil import of our country which means it reduces the import bill of our country and according to several estimates usage of e20 is to reduce crude oil import of our country bill by bill of our country by 50,000 crores annually. So that is one motive and that is one importance. Second importance is that it is environment friendly because petrol usually leads to high carbon dioxide emissions. But when ethanol is blended with petrol and E20 fuel, the carbon dioxide emissions are a bit less. 
which means reduced carbon dioxide emissions and which is why reduced pollution and reduce environmental consequences reduced environmental stress so this is the second benefit now the third benefit is that since it requires sugarcane since it require maize or other other biomass to produce ethanol it helps in improving the income of farmers of our country because fuel is something which is required by everyone and if ethanol based fuel is required by people of all across people all across the country then in manufacturing of ethanol agriculture residue is required or agriculture produce is required so definitely it is going to help sugarcane farmers in our country a lot or maize farmers in our country a lot or other biomass farmers in our country a lot by increasing their incomes or by doubling their incomes also of sorts and which is why that is a third motive third importance it provides a huge economic support and increases the income of farmers of our country and the fourth very big important part is that it helps us achieve the renewable energy mission of our country the self reliance energy mission of our country much before the target and india having net zero emissions by the year 2070 will be able to achieve this by this e20 program as well so for environment sustainability for better for protection of the environment and for better achievement of and for prior achievement of outcomes this program will help a lot and that is the fourth importance now since we have understood ethanol based blending of petrol e20 fuel is very very important for our economy now let us try to discuss the drawbacks or the negative implications of e20 now survey was conducted by local circles and it suggested that two in every three people owning petrol vehicles are against this e20 mandate also only 12% of the 36000 people who were surveyed across 315 districts of the country are in favor of the switch which means only 12% of the people are in favor of switch of the 36000 people surveyed which are the percentage is very minuscule and several critics and not just critics several videos also you could see online on social media where people have cited a drop a huge drop in mileage of their cars mileage of their uh, vehicles because of e20 fuel being used now and also while this is going on several users have highlighted higher maintaining costs for the vehicles using e20 fuel and which is why the survey urged the central government to give a choice to the public that which kind of fuel they want to use for their vehicles whether they want to use proper petrol 100% petrol or e20 fuel and people should be given the discretion that which fuel they would be getting no while on one hand central government has admitted that there is a marginal drop in the efficiency but they said that it can further be minimized the drop can further be minimized through improved engine tuning and also using e20 compatible materials in the engine and in the vehicle the honorable minister shri hardeep singh puri he has called these complaints or angst by the consumers as a vilification campaign which is facilitated by vested economic interests this is what he had to say and while the central government and the union minister hardeep singh puri they continue to defend this e20 policy niti aayog in itself the think tank of the government of india in itself has given a proposal and has given a recommendation to the government to compensate the consumers to compensate the users of the vehicles who has faced this drop in efficiency from ethanol blended fuels to compensate them by providing them tax incentive on e10 or e20 fuels so if tax incentive is provided to them then they might be compensated for the reduction in mileage or increase in the maintenance cost so that is one very very big concern that the users are complaining against the e20 fuel that it is reducing their mileage of the uh, of the vehicles and it is increasing the maintenance cost of the vehicles and it is damaging the vehicles also to an extent the second big issue or second big problem under this is that overall we have seen that import substitution through import substitution government had saved a lot of money and according to the minister as well since the 2014 2015 until now we have been able to save more than 1.4 lakh crores in foreign exchange through petrol substitution but the question here is the concern here is that has the benefit being passed to the end consumer or the end end user or not has the petrol price come down or not that is the real question we should be asking and the analysis to show this only similar trend was done by the hindu newspaper now analysis were done of these companies like coal india limited natural ongc limited that is oil and natural gas corporation or ioc limited indian oil corporation or bharat petroleum corporation bpcl and gas authority of india limited see the survey conducted by the hindu suggested that all these companies in total they contributed around 1.27 lakh crores or 42.3% 
of the three lakh crores dividends which the union government received from non banking public sector of the country so out of the 3 lakh crores received by the central government from the non banking public sector out of that around 42.3% dividend profit profits share was given by these oil companies these natural gas companies also one more fact which was highlighted was that this indian oil corporation and this bpcl they together saw a 255% rise in their dividend payouts more than 250% rise in their dividend payouts and also a 65% decline in the oil prices for them but the real question is how much of such benefit was given or forwarded to the consumers the answer is only 2% so which basically means that these two psus iuc and bpcl they got the benefit of such huge amount but they only passed 2% of a decrease in petrol price to the public so they get such a humongous profit such a humongous dividend for but for the public the benefit of the public directly being given is just a 2% reduction in the petrol prices which is not sufficient in any way manner at all so that is a second concern that the economic benefit the import substitution reduction in import prices or reduction in import bill the benefit being passed to the consumer or not if the benefit is not being passed to the consumer there is no point in doing it at all so that is a second point second point of criticism the third point is in relation to how environment friendly e20 actually is see the reality is that mostly ethanol is being made by sugarcane so sugarcane based ethanol supply has grown from 40 crore liters in the financial year 2014 to 670 crore liters in the year 2024 and the 670 crore liters is about 9% of the total sugar output of our country and while doing this the union government has said that they have paid farmers around 1.2 lakh crores since the financial year 2015 for the sugar cane based ethanol but again the question remains how environment friendly it is let us see through some data so in order to cultivate 1 ton of sugar cane around 60 to 70 tons of water is required which means more than 60 to 70 times water is required 60 to 70 tons of water is required for producing 1 ton of sugar cane that is clear now the reality is that many sugar cane growing regions in the country they do not receive rainfall more than 1500 to 3000 mm a year so basically 1500 to 3000 mm which is ideal for the growth of sugar cane which is heavy rainfall most of the regions who grow sugar cane do not achieve such good amount of rainfall but then the water is required for the production of sugar cane so where will the water come from definitely it will, it will come from the ground water extraction and that is what is done in majority sugarcane producing areas in the country so which means more groundwater extraction and usage of unsustainable irrigation methods are being done in mostly sugarcane producing states of the country or areas of the country see a 2023 central groundwater board report it has suggested in maharashtra region the sugarcane growing districts they use much more water than the other adjoining districts and which is why the level of groundwater table in those districts have come down for using more ground water than required and we all know that when ground water extraction is at a very high level it leads to the soil or the land getting degraded it be land becoming barren and which is what has, what has been happening in many sugarcane producing areas in a country the land has started to degrade it has started to become barren and the 2021 desertification and degradation atlas of a country suggested that almost 30% of land in india is degraded so basically this water intensive nature of sugarcane and extraction of ground water for the production of sugarcane in order to be used in formation of or production of ethanol and then being used in e20 petrol e20 fuel this is very much off the discussion in mainstream channels so this point is usually neglected by majority of the people that on one hand it is serving the environment it is benefiting the benefiting the environment but on the other hand itself it is leading to ground water depletion and ground water contamination as well now to solve this particular issue the central government has suggested that they are looking for ethanol supplies from different other products as well for example the food corporation of india says that the rice allocation for the ethanol has also jumped so rice also being used for ethanol for formation of ethanol and then corn output corn also being used for, for the formation of ethanol see this diversion from sugarcane towards other products is very very important and while sugarcane is important but other products also needs to be ventured out in order to ensure that we stabilize the environment in general and due to these e20 fuels there are more benefits than disadvantages i hope you gained a new perspective from the session do let me know what are your views surrounding this e20 and ethanol branded fuel i'll be very happy to read your comments all the very best have a beautiful day thank you